Welcome back everyone. We're going to take a Black Hand Gorge Rail Trail Adventure today. But first we're going to stroll up the sidewalk here and hit the Granville Inn. It's right on the way on Route 16 headed towards Newark, Ohio. And we're going to start off with a really nice brunch here at the beautiful patio on the Granville Inn. And we can see Buxton Inn, the historic Buxton Inn, and there's a red building there right across the road. And we're going to take a look at the menu here. We are going to start off with a really nice French onion soup and chopped salad. Mm -mm. You can see the prices are quite reasonable, and it is amazing food. They have a great chef in the back who really knocks it out of the park. Great service, too. And you can see here the French onion soup is delish. Chopped salad. Mm-mm. Now you can see here on the inside of the historic Granville Inn, the beautiful woodwork throughout. It's really reminiscent of the time that it was built, which would have been the mid-1920s. You can just see the Roaring Twenties parties that went on in this place back in the day. Nice bar. And just great ambiance in the entire place. You can really feel the history when you're in here. And just the woodwork quality is absolutely amazing. And back in through the entryway here, you come in in the fall and they'll have a nice roaring fire in the fireplace as you walk in. And we'll stroll out the front here. I'll show you where they are set up to do amazing weddings. They have a beautiful ballroom in the downstairs level. And look at all this beautiful stonework. And they got a set up there. I think they're having a reception later that evening over by the old coach house. You can see there Granville Inn established 1924. Nice parking here, and then uh, we parked right up the road. There's some auxiliary parking on the busy days, and you can see how well kept this place is. Beautifully landscaped. Just right up the street from downtown Granville. Now we'll be coming back out of the parking lot heading left, which would be east, back towards Newark. And we'll head back towards Route 16 and going to the Black Hand Gorge State Nature Preserve. Look at that beautiful stonework. Just outrageous. Now here we're going to drive along Route 16 on our way out to the Licking River, which is where the Black Hand Gorge is. And um, the Black Hand Gorge State Nature Preserve was established in 1975, and the gorge is a capsule of Ohio transportation history. It's having hosted canal boats, steam railroads, electric interurban cars, and automobiles through the years. It is named for the Black Hand Petroglyph that was found on the cliff face by the first settlers of the area. And Black Hand Sandstone is a resistant rock that also forms the backbone of the Hocking Hills region. Just a beautiful drive over there, folks. And here we go. We're coming up onto the Licking River here on this little over past this bridge here is underneath us is the Licking River and we'll come up to the entrance to the Black Hand Gorge rail trail system. And from 13,000 BC to 400 AD the early Native American Indians including the Hopewell Indians lived in the area and visited the gorge. 
Now, beginning in the early 19th century, the Anglo-European settlers used it as a transportation route through the hilly East Central Ohio landscape. We're all ready to go. We got our bikes off. Terrible parking job there, Al. A little threat of thunderstorms today, but we're going to brave the gorge anyway. Here's some old uh, historic photos right at the entrance here. Really nice. And they moved an old log cabin over here to our to the side there. Now I want to tell you guys a little bit of something about the background of this area. It's called the Legend of the Black Hand. It's a Native American legend. As you take in the beautiful countryside there, now we're passing one of the many trailheads. So if you are a hiker and not a biker, there are several trails along the Gorge Trail. And many legends have been left by the Native American Indians, and one of the most beautiful is Ayoma, the daughter of Chief Pagonga in the Black Hand. The Indians needed something sharp on the tips of their arrows to kill their prey, and Flint was chosen for this purpose. Flint, a Flint Ridge, a ridge between Zanesville and Newark, abounded with this natural resource, and the Indian tribes from all over the area now known as Ohio, would come to the spot known as the Flint Ridge. Now the legends say that the Great Father called the tribes together on a council rock not far from Flint Ridge, and the chiefs of all the area sat in a big circle, and the Great Father told them when they were in the pits, no more blood could be shed. This area known as Flint Ridge would be sacred ground. Oh, look at those beautiful cliffs, guys. Just amazing through here. So many moons passed, and the tribes heeded this warning, and they shared this valuable resource known as flint, and no blood was shed. So the great chief, Pagunga, had a beautiful daughter named Ayoma. Many braves wanted her hand in marriage. Her father said that the one that shall bring forth the greatest amount of scalps would be given his daughter's hand in marriage. Many braves went into battle, but only two returned to claim the young girl's hand for his bride. Now remember, there was not supposed to be any bloodshed. And this was decreed by the Great Father. Now that's the Black Hand Cliff over there, guys. Just got a glimpse of it. We'll see more of it later. The first Wakansta, who took from his belt his trophies and laid them one at a time at the feet of the chief. Then came the second brave, La Copis who was very dear to the heart of Ayoma. Wakonsta had the most scalps though, and would be the one to marry the chief's daughter the very next day. Later that night, the daughter decided to let leave with the other brave, the Kopis, her true love. They decided that they could reach the sacred ground at Flint Ridge, that they would be safe because no blood was permitted to be shed at that spot. Wakansta pursued them, forgetting the curse that would be upon any Indian who killed another on the sacred ground. As the two lovers stood on high on the ridge, Wakansta raised his tomahawk to strike. Luck hopeless, the true love of the girl, raised his hand in defense with his own tomahawk and cut off the hand of his attacker with one swoop. And off came off the hand of Wakonsta. Now the Indian maiden and her lover fell into the raging licking river during their struggle. The hand of Wakonsta fell with them and clung to the side of the cliff. The hand turned black and grew in size. It remained as a warning to all tribes. Never again would blood be spilled at the arrow pits of Flint Ridge. Now the canal came through this area in 1828 and unfortunately part of that rock that contained the remains of the hand was blasted away from the towpath. But still this region is known as the Black Hand Gorge. I hope you guys enjoyed that little story. Pretty inspiring to hear that before you go to this area and keep it in your head that that could be a lot of truth to that story. 
Now, in 1825, the governors Clinton of New York and Morrow of Ohio threw the first shovels full of dirt at the Licking Summit over near Newark, Ohio, and the Ohio and Erie Canal project was begun. And due to the lack of transportation, Ohio farmers were essentially eh, unable to sell their goods at any price, and Ohio was mired in a cash poor depression. The canal on the other hand, would connect the farmers to Lake Erie and the Ohio River and help open up new trade for the farmers. So, uh, the, uh, the towpath was uh, constructed for the canal, and that's when the workers blew up the black hand on the side of the sandstone cliffs right over the side. Now, we'll see more of it later here. And we will point that out. But you can see this beautiful land through this area and how stunning it is. Now, later, when the Ohio and Erie Canal system uh, started to get a lot of uh, competition from the railroads, the Central Ohio Railroad was built in 1850 and came through here also. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the main... Uh, things that uh, took place here was what was called the deep cut and the trains began running in 1851 and the deep cut uh, hugged the tracks through clay lick and tobasso which is right near this park and it took one year to carve through a solid mass of stand sandstone 64 feet high and 700 feet long and they called it the deep cut. And we later uh, in the 1800s we saw the Ohio Electric enter urban. That was uh, run through the area in 1890. And up in the 1950s and 60s they constructed the Dillon Dam which is nearby. And it protects the Muskingum Valley including the cities of Zanesville, McConnellsville, and Marietta. As you can see here the area still gets a little bit of flooding from time to time. Now here we stopped at the cliff where the Black Hand originally was over there across the way there. You can see where the old towpath for the canal boats was. And that was where the Black Hand petroglyph appeared. No swimming. I don't think too many people are following that rule. But this is one of the deep cuts. This isn't the deep cut, but that is definitely one of the deep cuts. And we also had a quarry over here across the way. They quarried stone, I'm sure, for making the towpath. Pretty magical through this area, guys. Okay guys, this is what we're talking about. Get off your butts, get outside, do something constructive. You see how beautiful it is here on the Black Hand Gorge Trail. We're having an awesome time. And uh, 
It's a little hot, a little humid today, but you know what? We brought plenty of water. We got good gear. We had a great light lunch, French onion soup, tossed salad, amazing. So do it, get here, have fun.